so guys in this video we are going to talk about aneurysm so we will talk about what is aneurysm how it occurs types of aneurysm risk factors behind aneurysm and the symptoms and at last we'll talk about the treatment so guys what is aneurysm if you'll go for the definition we'll see that uh, it is a kind of permanent dilatation of any blood vessel permanent localized to some particular places and uh, dilatation of any blood vessel that ultimately uh, lead us to the bulging of that vessel is called as aneurysm so i'll repeat it it is a permanent abnormal dilatation of blood vessels and uh, this can occur occur due to some congenital or any acquired abnormalities of blood vessels or in perfect uh, if you if you want to say then blood vessel wall so if there is any abnormality like congenital or any acquired abnorm abnormality in the blood vessel wall which can lead us to the permanent and localized dilatation of blood vessel is called as a aneurysm so now we will uh, look for the classification and the types of aneurysm we can uh, say it like aneurysm can be divided by three types or basically three groups if we want to say that according to the composition of wall types of aneurysm then it will be of two type two types that is the true aneurysm and the false aneurysm in true aneurysm there will be involvement of the all three layers tunica intima tunica media and tunica externa whereas in the false aneurysm there is involvement of only one layer and guys this false aneurysm mainly occurs due to most commonly due to trauma and uh, this is very severe condition uh, because then we have to operate it surgically and that is the immediate uh, operation so according to the composition of wall the aneurysm is divided into the two types now according to pathologic condition we will not go to deep in this pathological condition but we will see that it can be syphilitic aneurysm it can be mycotic aneurysm it can be a uh, berries aneurysm that is the aneurysm of a uh, circle of villis villis circle in the brain it can be a dissecting aneurysm that is the hole in the internal layer and ultimately blood will accumulate in between the interna and tunica media so uh, it can be atherosclerotic and that is the most common i forgot it to mention uh, first atherosclerotic this is the most common type of aneurysm that is the atherosclerotic 
so guys uh, these are the some classification first we saw about according to the composition of wall then we look after the pathological classification and now we will look for the classification according to the shape according to the shape of aneurysm so basically guys uh, in many books you will see only two types uh, that is three type uh, if you want to say in particular and uh, this three types of aneurysm according to the shape are the fusiform secular and the mixed but uh, we will uh, look for two, two or three more types and those are cylindrical and serpentine so according to the shape uh, sorry uh, yeah according to the shape how many types i said it is four type the first one is the secular shape so the secular uh, aneurysm the second we will talk about it is the fusiform aneurysm the third we will talk about that is the cylindrical aneurysm and the last one that is serpentine and also a uh, very coarse type of aneurysm so now we will uh, look for all this uh, aneurysm in little bit detail so guys a secular aneurysm it's a kind of bulging that is only on the one side just suppose this is the normal aorta and it uh, in the aneurysm there will be bulging on the one side and there is a spherical outpouching in the aorta so that is called as a spherical outpouching and that is called as a secular aneurysm whereas the fusiform aneurysm just suppose this is the normal aorta and due to aneurysm there is outpouching which is present on the both side that is 360 degree and the shape is spindle so guys uh, there is a spherical shape in secular aneurysm whereas the uh, spindle shape in the fusiform uh, aneurysm and there is also a uh, other type that is the mixed aneurysm so basically these two secular and fusiform aneurysm are mainly mentioned in the most of books but there are some other aneurysm also which is cylindrical that is like uh, sorry that is like cylindrical shape it will be almost like this and one more aneurysm is there serpentine that will be serpentine look or we can say some tortuous dilation dilatation of vessel so uh, this was some uh, types of aneurysm according to its shape so by now we talk about the aneurysm according to its shape or uh, types of aneurysm definition of aneurysm uh, how many types of aneurysm we are having according to its shape now we are going to talk about the risk factors what are the possible risk risk factors that can lead us to the aneurysm so let's talk about risk factors so guys aneurysm can occur due to some hereditary problems like uh, congenital problems so the first risk factor will be hereditary or congenital if we say some acquired risk factor then uh, the smoking can increase the chances of aneurysm hypertension 
also can increase the chance of aneurysm. Some other risk factor uh, will be atherosclerosis, any previous atherosclerosis or dyslipidemia. We already talked about some pathologic types of aneurysm that was syphilitic, syphilitic mycotic, berries, dissecting. So, uh, syphilitic. mycotic that is uh, infectious like bacterial or fungal other disorders like collagen synthesis disorder if we talk about collagen synthesis in particular then there are two disorders like uh, Marfan syndromes um, and Ehler Danlos syndromes. It can be associated with some other conditions like emphysema and uh, inguinal hernia. Guys, we don't have any solid proof that uh, why the, if the person is having an inguinal hernia or emphysema is more prone to any reason but we can uh, say or we can imagine that the inguinal hernia and emphysema all are like collagen synthesis or elastin synthesis problems so it will ultimately lead us to this collagen synthesis uh, theory that uh, Marfan syndrome or Ehler danlos syndrome can lead us to the aneurysm so uh, here I already taught you some risk factor for the aneurysm now we will talk about some symptoms of aneurysm so what are the main symptoms of aneurysm basically uh, we often see that aneurysm can be asymptomatic but it can be uh, we'll talk about the clinical manifestation often asymptomatic but anytime it can be symptomatic because the there is always a risk of aneurysm increase in the size of aneurysm or the rupture of aneurysm as we all know that if if there is a rupture of any big artery because the aortas or arteries are having very much uh, big pressures like 120 by 80 that is systolic by diastolic so if there is any leakage or uh, rupture of any artery this will lead us to the blood collection uh, in the surrounding area so of course we will see some symptoms after the rupture but before this rupture we will see some mild symptoms like uh, pain in the abdomen if it is a aortic abdomen uh, aortic uh, abdominal aorta we will see some pulsation in the abdomen above the umbilical area like uh, upside the umbilical area and guys if it is a aortic aneurysm then uh, this aneurysm can press some lumbar vertebras so there will be back pain Or there can be other regional symptoms like if the aneurysm is pressing some organs or some blood vessels of some organs this can ultimately lead uh, lead to the less blood supply to some organ there can be possible pain or there can be some other complications due to uh, this aneurysm so uh, this all are some symptoms which can which can lead us to the diagnosis of aneurysm so now we will talk about the investigation of choice that how we can investigate that the person is having aneurysm. So basically uh, aneurysm diagnosis of aneurysm is all about the size. I already said you that if it is the if it is more than 1.5 centimeter than the normal diameter then we can say that person is having aneurysm. 
and if the person uh, if if the diameter is less than 1.5 cm then it is called as a apesia so in the investigation of choice we basically do sonography in the sonography we check the size of aorta uh, just suppose the normal size of aorta is 3 cm and in the sonography we get that the size of aorta is increased up to 1.4.5 uh, cm so we can say that the size of aorta is 1.45 cm more than the normal size so it is called as an aneurysm so we do ultrasonography to check the size of aneurysm just suppose 4.5 and we also do follow up like if it is increasing from 4.5 to 5 or from 5 to 5.5 then this is the indication for surgery because till 5 cm we do conservative treatment and after 5 cm we go for surgery so uh, we do ultrasonography for the aneurysm diagnosis we do CT scan and we do some other tests like uh, ECG to find any other abnormalities related with aneurysm or some other secondary diseases. We do X-rays, we do CBC or normal sub all these tests, clotting, uh, clotting studies to rule out other diseases. So we just confirm by some other uh, tests so this was about the investigation of choice now we are having patient and we already diagnosed him with the aneurysm so how we will proceed like uh, what is the treatment of aneurysm so guys it all depends on the size of aneurysm that if it is a aortic uh, 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 aorta then the normal size is 3 cm and the uh, aneurysm aorta with aneurysm is the 4.5 cm then we will go for conservative treatment because the size is not that alarming the indication for surgery is 5 or more than 5.5 so we'll go for some conservative treatment in this conservative treatment we uh, suggest patient to stop smoking he should stop smoking this because it is a risk factor without this uh, there won't be any uh, recovery in the patient that is the spontaneous recovery won't be there we should control, we should suggest some medication which can control hypertension. So we should suggest some beta blockers. And some other, uh, we'll uh, tell, we will keep patient for follow -up. We will look for the size if it is spontaneously going away or if it is the size is increasing because the size can increase at any time. This is, we are dealing with some elasticity of some aorta. So it can rupture at any time, it can increase in the size at any time and if the blood uh, leakage is more than, it is, if it is uh, very more then it can lead, lead, reach us to the shock or hypovolemic shock and ultimately patient can die. So we will go for smoking cessation, we will go for hypertension control and we will keep the patient in the follow up. And if the conservative treatment don't work, and the patient's condition is worsening the size of aneurysm is increasing then we'll go for surgical approach in surgical approach we uh, basically do open repair or we do a close repair but that is all we'll talk about uh, surgical approach in our uh, another video that is the aneurysm and surgery so guys this was all about the pathophysiology and uh, the study of aneurysm in little thank you guys we'll meet in the next video till then bye bye